Welcome back to the big board. Whew. Got a bit of an upset stomach today. Uh, something disagreed with me yesterday. So uh, that's none of your concern. What you should be concerned about is Eilau 1807 uh, from Sound of Drums. And we're going to have a look at and walk through uh, either one or more combats. We'll see how far we get and uh, see if it all makes good sense. Uh, and when I talk about combat, I, I'm referring specifically to the assault charge. Mechanics within the game, I've been uh, working out the movement stuff and working out the orders things and what you do and when you do it and all that sort of good business and so far it's all good. Rel the interesting thing is, as uh, far as I can figure out, the only time you can fire is when this particular cube, and there are often usually two of them in the bucket uh, versus just the one for this scenario, that's the only time you can fire uh other than defensive fire and so when you have attack orders and that's something i probably should look at when you've got attack orders you can move up adjacent to things but really the only choice you have is to assault uh, you can't kind of move up and take a few pot shots and and whatever otherwise you've got to basically wait for that red shit uh red uh, uh block to appear and then you get to do your fire but anyway let's have a look at assault and see, A, if we're doing it right, because I'm sure someone will watch and go, hey, hey, you're wrong, because uh, that's always fun. Uh, second Division, fourth uh, core here with our leader uh, uh, on top. We moved him up. He was with the artillery. Doesn't add any value there. He uh, has uh, these two uh, brigades there. They're in column. Uh, and it's a 10 underneath as well. So we've got 20 factors going in to this hex here, which has eight factors in defense. There's four underneath there. And so uh, we have a, basically a, a two to one, I believe. And now I'm now that I'm looking at this, I'm gonna quickly uh, double check me Matthews just to make sure 20 divided by eight is 2.5. So I think we round up to three to one uh, in this particular instance, because I've already rolled the dice. I ain't gonna make a difference, but it's three to one. Uh, so this, this. Now, the next thing we look at first. So the first thing we do, uh, based on the sequence of play here, that's on the little chart, is we do a defensive fire, and that is executed in the same manner that we would do a normal fire uh, if we if the little red uh, block was pulled. And so we would look at the the number of uh, uh, strength factors there. You can only fire four out of a hex, so we would start on the four column. Uh, the firing unit is in line, uh, so that's going to actually, uh, now it's in line because it's in, um, well, it's actually, it's in line, uh, but if it's in obstructed terrain, which it is in that well, sort of, uh, in, in, uh, Ilau village, Ilau village here, we will multiply by two. Uh, so that will give us a strength of eight. And then there, we look at the DRMs and basically, uh, none other than excuse me, the target is uh, infantry in column, in which case my guys are, that would add uh, two to the die roll, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, however, I rolled a three, and I'll show you the table in a sec. The three plus two is gonna get me up to five on the six to eight column. I'm looking to make sure there's no other mods, I don't believe there are. And I'm gonna put this in front of the screen now, so stand by, ooh, look at that, sexy times. All right, there we go. Uh, so we can focus that in a little bit. So eight column. I said, what did I say? I rolled a three, goes up to, I said two, goes up to five, actually. So no effect. It's pretty hard to hit stuff, which <clears throat> I think, given the error, makes sense. Uh, so that defensive fire, no effect. Now, in the rules, it then says the next thing to do is determine the DRM due to the odds ratio, uh, and then uh, apply other possible DRMs to the hold the position roll. Uh, which is the, uh, this is going to be this table here with all these DRMs. There's a big old swag of them here. And uh, we're going to make a roll against a certain number. And depending on whether we roll above it or below it, the dudes that are being assaulted will either run and take a step loss or uh, the other chaps uh, will, uh, or, or everyone will kind of stay where they are. So let's do that math real quick. Uh, I said it was two to one earlier on, uh, three to one earlier on, but Previously, I had calculated it out and rolled the dice at a two to one. 
But as you'll see, this won't make a difference. Uh, so it would be minus one or minus two, depending on the odds. It would be plus two because it's in, it's in obstructed terrain. The village, <coughs> excuse me, it's a uh, column attacking versus line. Minus one, because you get that uh, column attack benefit, right? Now, uh, if it was line attacking column, then there's different uh, DRMs all down this list here. Uh, so I pick up the terrain I did, yes. And then another minus two for what? For the leader. Uh, his uh, exhortations are uh, duly noted. So I rolled a six, uh, and I, that's going to give me a net four. Now, if I had actually calculated correctly, and it was a uh, three, because I think you, you round up for everything uh, in this particular, in, for, for combats, I believe, but we'll, we'll just leave it at, it's a net four. So that's the good news for the French, because here's, here's what you, so that was to hold and not to stand, but to hold. And so if the attacking charging unit uh, survives the defensive fire combat, which they did, uh, the def defender must check to hold the hex. We roll 2d6, and the result is equal to or higher than 8 the defender holds. And the attacking uh, uh, charge or the attack or the charge fails. Both attacker and defender stay in the hexes. But if it's below, well, the guys that got attacked lose a step and retreat their full uh, movement. Uh, not full movement. Uh, yes, full movement allowance in hexes. And it's different, a little bit different for cavalry. Now, interestingly enough, when we go to Rule 24 for retreats, uh, it says units have to retreat due to a missed stand check. Now, it doesn't reference at all anywhere that I can see hold. Uh, so that would just be a clarification. And hopefully, I don't know if, the, if this game's started shipping or not or whether they caught these things or not. But I would think it should say units have to retreat due to a missed stand or hold check. Because standing is different. There's a different, uh, you're ro I think you're rolling to stand based on uh, fire results there, right? So that's, that's a combat. And so here we would take these two guys. I'll get my hand out of the way. We would put a three marker underneath the top guy. And they go back one. What's my movement rate for? One, two, three, four. Now, I don't know uh, if there's any other marker that goes on that or we just know they're retreated. I'm just going to put them just out of view here. See, they're down there. And let's actually just put... Uh, let's do, let me just put this next to here so I don't forget. So I know that they retreated and just in case there's something that has to go on top of them. Now, what is uh, what you are supposed to do when you do a defensive... Well, actually, it's not when you do a defensive fire. It's only a fire phase, but you put a smoke marker doesn't do anything. You put a smoke marker on the units that are fired, so you know that they're fine. Right, uh, so now these chappies get to move in, and I can reorient my facing, which is pretty interesting. Now, clearly, uh, I could expose my flank and uh, uh, orient myself to the rear of that artillery. Sure would be exciting to do that, or the flank of these guys out in the open. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that, actually. I think we're going to do just this. We're going to Put these guys and orient them this way. Keep in mind these are one hour turns too. So there's a, there's a little bit of uh, suspension of disbelief here, given the hex scale and stuff. All right, so that happens. Now I can go on and do uh, do this next uh, next combat if you like. Let's see, what have we got there? Where are my tweezers? Where are my tweezers? Oh, he said, being so organized. Uh, I can't wait to move into my new place. All right, the hell with it. Um, eight, that's 12. All right, so 12 versus... I knew that had happened. 20. <laughs> I'd never move my counters right-handed. Don't know why I'm doing this right-handed. Okay, 12 versus 20. Wow. Okay. Well, that's fun. Uh, 12 versus 20. Let's, uh, we've got to do a defensive fire first. And, um, yeah, all right. Defensive fire first. So that's going to be four factors because that's the most they're going to fire out of a given hex. Doubled because they're lined, so they go onto the eight table. So I'm looking for a 2d6 roll that's low. I rolled, no, high, I mean, and I rolled a nine this time. A nine on the eight, 
And I think there was a plus two to that for last time for being a column. Nine, and there it goes to 11. That's two step losses. That's going to leave a mark. One of those guys. Eight. Is that eight? No, it's 11. So it's going to be nine. Do I have a nine here? Here we go. Love how these counters punch out. Really nice. Well, that's a six. All right. Well, is there another? Are there 11s? It's got to be 11s. I mean, nines. Six. Seven, eight. Well, what do you know? I mean, hmm. Okay, well, I guess we can't use those markers unless there's another sheet here somewhere, which there could well be. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if there's one here. Yep. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Nine. Nine on that guy. Now, I guess this is where we've got it. We took a loss. We've got to check the stand. Gonna roll some dice. I rolled low. I hope that's good. Uh, five. We rolled a five. There's that. Oh, you can't see it. There's the die roll there for that. Actually, as I'm looking at this, I don't have to check the stand. The only reason I check the stand is if it suffer if I suffer an asterisk result uh, due to fire combat, or if an adjacent friendly unit retreats or is eliminated, and we roll two to six. And then uh, if I roll under six with some modifiers, then uh, it's bad news. And we just missed the uh, asterisk result on the six to eight column. And if we had got a 12, that would have been an asterisk and then life would have been bad. So the attack can still go in. Uh, we're going to suffer some penalties for that, though. It's still going to be uh, one to one. And I said, oh, I've got 12 here. So, yeah, it's one to one. That's not going to be, <coughs> excuse me, that's not going to be great for this. So, uh, as I said, we did the defensive fire, so that's accurate. We now do the uh, check to hold uh, for the defender. And one to one is going to give us nothing, uh, no modifiers. Uh, there is nothing until we get to, they're in the open there. Uh, so there's no modifier for that. I'm going to use my pinkies to keep track of things. I believe there's got to be something here, column versus uh, line, line, infantry and line, assaulted by infantry and column. So that's a minus one. So I'm going to get a minus one, no leaders, no artillery, etc., etc. Minus one, roll 2d6. So we'll take this guy, these guys here. And I uh, got 11. Oh, well, so, they st so everybody stays where they are. All right, uh, this is probably going to hurt. I'm going to, uh, I don't have to attack here, but I'm going to, just to see. Uh, it looks like I probably shouldn't stack uh, artillery by itself. I um, just saw the DRM for it. So we're absolutely going to do that and uh, try and take advantage of the situation because that's how I roll. Um, I've got these facing me, but really that should be facing the way the unit is facing. So we'll put the nine underneath there. And I rolled up there in line, so let's see what happens. Defensive fire is going to be a hoot. Uh, four factors coming out. It's artillery. And I believe that's just standard artillery, foot artillery uh, range. It's going to get a multiplier. Adjacent ah, times four. Four times four is going to be 16. Son of a bitch, your own Rooney. All right. And... Uh, it's not in column, thank goodness. That's why I did that, right? Oh, genius. Uh, so we're going to roll 2d6. Here we go. And I rolled a 6. <laughs> uh, still get one loss, though. One loss. We need a little marker. We need a little marker. We need a little marker. Here we go. One loss. So it's going to take that. No, that's the wrong freaking camera. No, here we go. Take that down to an 8. Uh, now, it's 8 versus 4 in the hex. 2 to 1. We'll get a uh, minus uh, two to one. We'll get a minus one for that. We're going to get a whopping um, artillery alone in a hex minus five. So that's minus six. Let's just roll two dice and see what happens. Uh, yeah, we, we got it. So net two at the moment. And uh, there's really nothing else that's going to make that uh, be greater than eight. So this artillery retreats. Now, I don't know what happens to artillery when it retreats. So stand by. Yes, as I suspect, as suspected, it's eliminated. Well, so that uh, bad day at the office for those guys, and I think we'll uh, we'll enter in in that at that angle. I said I took one loss there, right? 
so we can put some pressure on that flank and uh yeah interesting all right so there you go look there's a couple of combats couple so some fire action three assaults just for shits and giggles uh elau 1807 sound of drums etc uh a publisher that's an activation complete for those guys i believe and we will then pull the next one. Let's see what it is. Ooh, it's green. So it's going to be an opportunity for the Russians to respond. Uh, and we'll see what happens from there. So I hope you enjoyed a quick little snapshot of uh, the gameplay mechanics. And we'll talk a little bit more about where I think this fits in the pantheon of complexity uh, with Napoleonics in the next video. Ciao.